Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'm going to be repairing this Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus I purchased for $400 a few months ago. As you can see, it is shattered on the front display, but the rest of the phone appears to be in pretty good shape. This particular S10 Plus is a 128GB variant, dual SIM model in prism white. But before we get started with the repair, I'd like to thank the team over at iFixit for sponsoring this video. While most of the world right now is stuck inside due to coronavirus, iFixit is currently running a Fix at Home campaign to encourage people to fix broken devices around the house. So if you're looking to get parts, tools and guides for your next repair, visit ifixit.com slash Jeffries or visit the link below. Coming back to the S10 Plus, this is how it rocked up. It was advertised as having a broken touchscreen, which indicated to me that the touch didn't function on the device. Included with the phone was two cases, one of which was brand new, and the box which contained the phone. Now, oddly enough, the phone wasn't where it was supposed to be inside the box. It was actually put in the packet where all the documentation is. So pulling that out, I can put that aside, and you can see I've got this little stand thing. We've also got the wall adapter, which at first I thought was from the United Kingdom. We've got the USB-C to USB-A, original USB-C cable, and a brand new set of headphones. So, powering up the Galaxy S10 Plus, you can see that it's booted up to the setup screen, and the touchscreen does indeed work. So, all that appears to be wrong with this device is its cracked glass. Now, unfortunately, we can't just replace the glass, we'll need to replace the entire OLED panel. And to do that, we'll need to take off the back to be able to access the front display. Now, I used hot air to do this and a suction cup at first in an aim to be able to get a plastic pick between the glass and frame. But I ended up bruising my finger as Samsung really likes to adhere the back of their phones to maintain that water resistance. Eventually, I used an eye slack tool, which allowed me to get extra pressure on that back panel, which allowed me to get a small gap, which I can insert a plastic pick. Now, once it was inserted, I heated up around the edges to prevent the glass from cracking when I removed that eye slack tool, as I didn't want to have a pressure point where that pick was whilst I was removing the eye slack tool. I moved two picks down the sides in an aim not to crack that back panel. As you can see, it gets quite bent in the whole process. With enough luck, I was able to remove the back panel entirely without a single crack. Now that we're inside the Galaxy S10 Plus, it's time to remove 16 Phillips screws using my iFixit screwdriver of the wireless charging and speaker assembly. Once we take out these screws, we can take out the wireless charging and speaker assembly as one whole piece, or we can unadhere the wireless charging coil from the speaker and remove them separately. But it's easier to remove them as one piece, so that's what I did. It's a good idea to take the SIM card tray out if you haven't already, and we can proceed on by disconnecting the battery, taking out the front-facing camera, disconnecting a few flex cables, and undoing three more Phillips screws. With that done, we can remove the motherboard as one whole assembly by simply removing it from the frame. You'll notice the USB-C has a gasket around it which sort of adds a little bit of resistance when trying to remove the board as one piece. You can see that this is a singular board with no removable USB-C connector. So if that breaks, well, you have to resort to only wirelessly charging your phone. However, if you own the Galaxy S10 5G, you will find that it has a replaceable USB-C connector as it has an entirely different motherboard layout. So I'm glad Samsung had a replaceable USB-C connector on at least some of their phones. The S10 Plus is now ready for its display replacement. So doing a similar process to the back panel, I can apply some heat, a suction cup, and a pick to get that old display removed from the frame. With lots of prying and lots of heat, that display has finally been removed and it's time to clean up all of the residual adhesive left behind. Once we're satisfied with the outcome, I can crack out my new display adhesive from my fix it and apply it to the frame. As you can see, it is similar to the original, so it should be holding the display down and hopefully will have some kind of water resistance for the phone. It's very important to make sure to align this correctly and make sure it is secured down, not only just to hold the display in place, but to stop any dust or water from entering the phone. Although I couldn't guarantee this phone is water resistant, it would definitely hold up better than without any of these gaskets installed. 
With everything seated down in place, I can remove all of the protective films on the frame itself. It's now time to crack out our replacement display, which I picked up from iFixit. We can go ahead and install this on our frame and get our S10 Plus back up and running. Removing the protective film from the back, we can line the two halves up together and press them into place. With that done, I can remove the headphone jack, which will give me a little bit more clearance and make it easier to reinstall the motherboard, reinstall that headphone jack, reinstall the front facing camera. And at this point, I'm gonna test out the display we just removed to see if it's worth holding onto as a test display. Now it turns out I completely killed the panel as I damaged the flex cables for the screen. But nevertheless, we can connect up our new screen and battery to test out the phone. Pressing and holding the power button and nothing happened. And that was just due to the pins for the power button not making contact with the motherboard. So pressing it down into place, the phone powered up and we can boot up into the diagnostic menu. We can see the touch is fully functional on this iFixit display. It's time to power down the phone, reinstall the three Phillips screws, make sure all the flex cables have been installed, and it's time to reassemble the phone entirely. I'll install the speaker and wireless charging coil assemblies and those 16 screws. It's a good idea to make sure your SIM card tray is fitting inside the phone. If not, you may need to reposition your motherboard. With everything good to go, it's time to get that back panel reinstalled. Luckily, I didn't crack mine, so I've got the matching IMEIs and serial number printed on the back. I'll need to take off the old adhesive. Now, this is extremely strong, and you can see the amount of force that I'm pulling on this as the back panel slides around on the table. With a little bit of alcohol and lots of prying, I was able to remove most of the old adhesive and did as best as possible to remove as much of this gunk with some alcohol, various picks, and also some paper towel. With all the old adhesive removed, it's time to crack out my replacement adhesive for the back panel. I can position it up and press it down into place with a sponger, ensuring it's correctly adhered to the back of the glass. When a satisfactory application of the adhesive has been installed, we can remove the two layers of protective film over the adhesive, and then we can get the rear panel and line it up with the top and bottom of the S10 Plus and press it down on the sides, securing the back panel into place. We can then finally remove the plastic protective film on the new display, and we're done. So this is it, my 128 gig Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus dual SIM variant, which is now in pristine condition thanks to a new OLED screen. The rest of the device is in brand new condition with the factory plastic still remaining on the back glass and sides. It appears that the phone was only used for a short period of time before the screen was damaged. The phone is complete with all its original accessories, including a brand new set of headphones. The S10 and S10 Plus feature an inbuilt fingerprint reader as part of the screen assembly. And I know a lot of you guys are gonna be wondering whether this still functions after the screen replacement. And you bet it does. This iFixit screen is totally like the original and everything is functional from the touch, screen, and fingerprint functionality. This phone is from the United Arab Emirates as it says in settings. So it appears they use the same power adapter as the United Kingdom. This is running Android 9 and Samsung's One UI version 1.1. This is the latest phone in my collection, which means it could become my new daily driver. My recent phones include a Galaxy Note 7, S9 and S8. So the S10 would be an improvement over all three phones. So I would definitely be trying this phone out for a couple of weeks. And if I like it, I will be holding onto it and it will remain as my new daily driver. If you're looking for any of the parts or tools used in this video, you can check them out below in the description. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the phone restoration playlist for more videos just like this one. Also, make sure to follow me on my social media for behind the scenes and content that doesn't always make it to a YouTube video, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.